أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ألم تر أن الله يعلم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ما يكون من نجوى ثلاثة إلا هو رابعهم ولا خمسة إلا هو سادسهم ولا أدنى من ذلك ولا أكثر ولا أدنى من ذلك ولا أكثر إلا هو معهم أينما كانوا ثم ينبئهم بما عملوا يوم القيامة إن الله بكل شيء عليم رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على it's on the inside. You want me to put it on the outside? Better? Yeah. Okay. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyid al-Anbiya'i wal Mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi hajma'in thumma ma ba'd as-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh So session 5 is about what destroys Islamic work and at the end, at the heart of that poison is Najwa This concept of Najwa in the Quran is mentioned a couple of times and the most comprehensive passage dealing with that is in Surah Al-Mujadala This is Surah number 58 of the Quran so I've taken those few ayat and I'm going to share them with you. But before we do, let's talk a little bit about just the essence. What is Najwa anyway? And you know, uh, uh, how should we understand it properly? Essentially, in any organization, there's a tendency for subgroups to develop. So for example, there's you know, six people in a board. Three of them are very close friends. So you know, the six meet every week they all get together, but three of them have dinner afterwards because they're close friends. And when they have dinner, they discuss the same things that were discussed in the meeting and they share more opinions about it, disagreements, whatever it may be. And what happens then is because you have a clique, you have a subgroup within the group, right? And that subgroup, because they discuss more with each other, even if it's for good intentions, because they discuss more with each other, they tend to become more solid in their opinion their opinion starts becoming more and more fortified. So when they come to the meeting with the other three, they already have kind of one opinion. And they're defensive about that opinion. And anything that comes their way, they deflect it. So it kind of becomes like a lobby almost. You understand what I'm saying? It becomes like a lobbying thing. And so what this does is it disrupts the unity of the and the openness of the gathering and of the decision making and it cuts away at shura because in shura everybody has equal access to give an opinion and everybody shares their, opi their opinion on the same platform they don't meet afterwards and two people become a block and four people become a block and then they come to the meeting that forming of a block on the outside that's basically najwa that's basically what it is the linguistic meaning of najwa is to get away from, to escape from najat, actually it's from the same root. To escape from the larger body and meet in private. That's literally what najwa means, just meeting in private. Al-majlis, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, bisurur, okay? Asir fil majlis, that's a secret in the majlis. And you're just meeting by yourself, that's what najwa is. And it can be harmful, it can be harmless. It could be good. It could actually be good. And so, in this particular surah, Allah talks about majwa, najwa that is catastrophic. It can destroy Islamic work. It can destroy the Islamic school. It can destroy the masjid. It can destroy whatever organization. Because a few people are discussing things that are, you know, when the Prophet says, alayhi salatu wasalam, inna al majalisa bil amanati. Amil majalis bil amana. The gatherings, the meetings are dependent on the ability to trust. And the, the, the meetings are a form of trust. So Najwa violates that trust. Because the discussion about that issue. So let me just make it, instead of making it entirely like uh, uh, hypothetical or entirely theoretical, let me just give you one example. Let's just, because it'll, it'll make it more tangible, right? So it's a masjid and they're, they're discussing whether or not we should build a gym, let's just say. Okay, whether or not we should build a gym. So they have a meeting. And they have a meeting and there's 20 people in the board and everybody's giving an opinion and there's discussion going on. Meeting is over. 
four people get together, they're hanging out at one of these guys' houses, and they're like, this is such a stupid idea, why do they want to spend so much money on a gym? Who comes anyway? What about the insurance liability? What about this? What about that? What about the other? They said none of those things when they were in the meeting. That's the place to say it. The fact that you have an opinion, a genuine concern should be raised at the meeting. That is shura. If you don't open your mouth then, then you don't open your mouth anywhere else. That's the place to do it. Then you go and you're complaining and these three other guys with you, you're like, yeah, you're right, this is wrong, blah, blah, blah. Then you come in the next meeting all angry. Because you know, if one person is upset and they talk to somebody, they're upset, they're, the anger isn't double, it's squared. Literally, it, it doesn't get doubled, it gets squared exponentially worse. When there's a, uh, let me tell you something about just social psychology. When two people or four people are discussing a small problem, a small problem, like you're discussing a khutbah, and you say, you know, the khatib, he said something I didn't really understand. Or I wasn't quite comfortable with what he said, small thing. If four people are discussing it, by the time they're done discussing it, the khatib was basically a kafir. Okay? It's a small problem, but when four or five people discuss a small problem, it becomes a big problem. Right? So it becomes a big deal. It becomes a huge deal. And this is essentially what Najwa does. It allows for small issues that can be dealt with very easily and turns them into very, very, very big issues. Shura is not just who you discuss with, but when you discuss. There's a time and a place to give your opinion. There's a time and a place to give your opinion. Now, in the Prophet's case, alayhi salatu wasalam, there were people in the gathering that were Muslims. And some of them were weak Muslims. People of weak iman are sitting there too. Hypocrites are sitting there too. And when the Prophet's done talking, they don't open their mouth when the Prophet's talking. But when he's done, then they gather people. Hey, so, ماذا قال Anifan? What did he just say? What was that? What's he talking about? Like right after the meeting, they're undermining what just went on in the meeting. Right after the halaqah. This is najwa. This is destructive to Islamic work. This is something you should not be a part of. If you're the guy that's starting it, stop it. If you're the guy innocently standing there listening, stop listening and walk away. Don't hang around. Don't be a part of it. Now listen to these ayat. أَلَمْ تَرَى أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَبُ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Didn't you know that Allah already knows, or Allah certainly knows, whatever is in the skies and whatever is in the earth, مَا يَكُونُ مِن نَجْوَى ثَلَاثَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ رَابِعُهُمْ There's never a secret council of three people except He's the fourth one there. He's their fourth, Allah. وَلَا خَمْسَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ سَادِسُهُمْ There's never five people meeting secretly and He's the sixth one. وَلَا أَدْنَى مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَلَا أَكْثَرُ There's no less, there's no more that ever goes without Allah being a member in the meeting. إِلَّا هُوَ مَعْهُمْ Except that He's with them. أَيْنَ مَا كَانُوا Wherever they may go and hide. ثُمَّ يُنَبِّئُهُمْ بِمَا عَمِلُوا يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Then He will tell them what they did on the day of resurrection. He will inform them of this crime. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ No doubt Allah is completely knowledgeable of all things. أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَى الَّذِي نُهُوا عَنِ النَّجْوَى Didn't you look at those people who were told not to do that? ثُمَّ يَعُودُونَ إِلَى لِمَا نُهُوا عَنْهُ Then they go back to the same thing they were told not to do. Because way back in Surah An-Nisa, a few years before, it was revealed in Surah An-Nisa, لَا خَيْرَ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِّن نَجْوَاهُمْ there's no good in the najwa that they do. Most of the time when they have a secret meeting, no good comes out of it. إِلَّا مَنْ أَمَرَ بِصَدَقَةٍ أَوْ مَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ إِصْلَاحٍ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ Except the one who had a secret meeting to take the good work further, to give charity, or to do something obviously good, or to make reconciliation between the people. For example, let me give you an example of good najwa. It's the exception, it's not the rule. So if you're doing najwa, don't assume it's good najwa. <laughs> It's probably not. Chances are it's not good najwa. But here are some limited examples of good najwas, good secret counsel. We should build a gym at this masjid. We should have a fundraiser next month. It's all agreed upon. Meeting's over. Wafaqna, qarrarna. We decided, we agreed. Then three of you get together and over ice cream at Brahms, you decide, hey, you know what? Before the fundraiser even starts, let us put in like 5,000 each. Let's just get it started. Just the three of us. For the sake of Allah. Let's be ahead of everybody else in doing good. That's good najwa. 
You, the, the decision was already made. You didn't go back and undermine that decision. You propelled that decision further. You gave it more momentum. That's a good thing. Aw ma'roofin, or obviously you did something that cannot be quarreled with. It's something decent. Ma'roof, everybody would recognize that you did something good. Or the meeting is over, and you realize one guy in the meeting was particularly angry. He was particular, and you get together and you say, "Hey, that guy seemed angry. Let's go talk to him. Let's make him feel better." Bro, why are you angry? We love you. Everybody's in this together. No, but they don't listen to me. They don't care about my opinion. And I keep telling them this and they never listen. Why should I even be in the shura? Why did they make me a member anyway if they're never going to listen to me? Bro, akhi, look, we love you. And we value your opinion. And more than that, Allah values your opinion. And you, Allah heard your opinion. Allah knows that you are sincere in your opinion. And we want you to come and we don't want you to be angry. Anger is from the shaitan. Please listen to it. Yeah, I guess you're right. Mm. That's good najwa. Now you're diffusing flames, not starting new fires. You're putting fires out. That's good najwa. You understand the difference? So you have to make sure that you're, if you're gonna do najwa, first of all, try to stay away from it. If you're gonna do it, it better be clearly, undis indisputably a good thing. And if it has the potential of turning into a bad thing, don't go near it. Because it's a serious matter. So many ayat of Quran in the same place dedicated to one problem, it can't be a small thing. It must be a big deal. Lam yathkur marra faqad. He didn't just mention it once. Look at this. We just read this whole ayah. Three people don't meet except he's the fourth. Five don't meet except he's the sixth. Any less, any more. And then, alam tara ila ladhi nuhu anil najwa? Didn't you look at the people who were forbidden from doing najwa? Thumma yauduna lima nuhu anhu? Then they go back to the very thing they were forbidden from. Yatanajauna bil ithmi wal uduan. They keep making secret counsels that add to sin, that, do, that produce sin. And what else do they produce? Animosity. Because when you have najwa, your clique becomes tighter together and you develop a natural animosity towards the next one. This is most masjid elections across the country. Najwa, najwa, najwa. That's what it is. It's so sad. It's, and then we wonder why there's no feeling of barakah in our masajid. You walk into a masjid, you're like, why don't I feel like there's a masjid? When you walk into a masjid with barakah, you will know it. You will feel it. And when you walk into a masjid that is bankrupt from barakah, you will feel nothing. You'll just, it's a, it's a building. And it's, the goodness is sucked out of it. And najwa is one of those things that sucks the goodness out of a masjid. It just pulls it out of the masjid. And this unfortunately has become the scene in Islamic organizations. Undercutting one another. You know, dirty politics in elections. What are you gonna get out of masjid elections, man? whoop de doo you're a board member. Why are you like holding secret meetings, vote for me? What are you doing? What are you, you're doing this for Allah. That's it. Uh, you wanna have the opportunity to serve? And if you don't, it's not like you can't serve. You can serve in so many other things. Don't get hung up on your titles. President of the Masjid. There's a much better title, Abdullah. It's available. You can take it. Okay? You don't have to be that. And if you are, I'm not saying you're a bad guy, if you are, <laughs> okay, you're a good guy. But you don't vie for it, you don't, what are you going to get out of it? What, what are you going to get out of it? You know? And then we start thinking all good things come from us. And if it's not for us, I don't know, this, this whole building might collapse. If I don't give my, if they don't take my opinion, I don't even know how they survived. You know, I go to masjids across the country, right? And I meet uh, uh, interesting people, and I've met at least in every masjid, I've at least three, three or four people that come to me and say, Brother, I started this masjid by myself. Alhamdulillah. All praise belongs to Allah, but me. <laughs> I mean at least three guys in the same masjid that were the only ones that started the masjid. <laughs> like, thank you. Uh, I guess. <laughs> May Allah reward you. Yeah, nobody was here when I started this place. Okay. That guy was here. He must have been hiding behind a tree when you were the only one. <laughs> you didn't see each other. <laughs> now, they say they, they make they make these council meetings. Then wa ma'siyatir rasul and in disobeying the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. By the way, we have to understand that the messenger in these ayat, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is not just the messenger. He's the head of the organization. He's the head of the organization, and they are now going to undermine the head of the organization. The hidayah we're getting is, these people get together and they hate the emir, so when they come to the next meeting, they're gonna make sure the emir looks bad. They're gonna pull him down. They're gonna drag him down. 
And then they say, the Quran says, Hayyawka bima lam yuhayyika bihillah. They greet you with what Allah didn't greet you with. Allah greets the Messenger with salam. We greet each other with salam. They say, Assalamu alaikum. Death be upon you. Assalamu alaikum. The other meaning here is they say salam, but they don't mean salam. Hal yumkinuka an taqula salam wa la ta'ali salam? Yumkin. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. You just like, gave me the look of death, Voldemort, and you gave me salam. That's not salam. That's not peace. So they greet you with uh, ingenuine greetings. And then, وَيَقُولُونَ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ And when they do curse the Prophet Wasallam, and they do say, Assalamu alaikum, they're like, no lightning struck. لَوْلَا يُعَذِّبُنَ Allah. How come Allah didn't punish us? If He really was a messenger, what would have happened? We would have been obliterated the moment we insulted Him. How come no punishment happened? Pshih, yeah, messenger. You see, it started with Najwa and they ended up losing their Iman in that meeting. And they said it deep down inside the words of Kufr. لَوْلَا يُعَذِّبُنَ اللَّهِ Subhanallah. بِمَا نَقُولُ حَسْبُهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ يَصْلَوْنَهَا فَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ Jahannam is enough for them. The only thing enough for them is Jahannam. Oh, what a horrible place to be that is. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا تَنَاجَيْتُمْ Those of you who have Iman, when you are going to hold a secret meeting, فَلَا تَتَنَاجَوْا بِالْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ وَمَعْصِيَةِ الرَّسُولِ Then don't hold a meeting with full of sin and creating animosity and disobedience to the Messenger. وَتَنَاجَوْا بِالْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى And have a meeting that produces good and taqwa. Going back to وَتَعَوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى Have a secret meeting to do more good. To increase yourselves in taqwa. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي لَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ be mindful of Allah, you will be herded towards Him. The same Allah you'll be herded towards. إِنَّمَا النَّجْوَى مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ that, that entire secret council practice, that entire meeting after the meeting, that sub-meeting in the parking lot, that's from shaitan. إِنَّمَا النَّجْوَى مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ لِيَحْزُنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا It's only there to cause grief to those who believe. You see the 12 people, people held a meeting. Everybody agreed, everybody made dua afterwards. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ سَمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ The meeting is done. As you're leaving, you notice the three troublemakers are standing in the parking lot in the corner talking, pointing fingers and you're like, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Allahu الْمُسْتَعَانِ I know that's, that, that's trouble right there. لِيَحْزُنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا So they can cause grief. So they can be, the, those who believe can be grieved. وَلَيْسَ بِضَارِّهِمْ شَيْئًا But they shouldn't worry, they're not going to be harming them at all. إلا بإذن الله except by Allah's permission وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون just like in Shura we put our trust in Allah just like that in the problem of Najwa we put our trust in Allah وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون now one of my favorite ayat about this problem solving when people come as a block clicks troublemakers do they come to the meeting on time or late troublemakers usually come to the meeting on time or late they come late they have their little meeting and they take their sweet time coming and when they come they sit in the back and when they sit in the back they sit together so when the Amir is speaking they're whispering to each other and everybody can hear them whisper is everybody disturbed? yeah and then the Amir says something and you hear from the back <laughs> and the whole meeting is disturbed they come late they sit in the back and then they have the most complaints and under, they don't have genuine complaints or genuine concerns. They just have comments, snickers, undermining. Oh yeah, that was true genius right there. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Condescending comments. Dismissive comments. So Allah Azza wa revealed the solution in the meetings of the Prophet because the munafiqoon used to come late and then they used to sit in the back and they used to make trouble. Disrupt the whole meeting. By the way, can that still happen now? Sure. So Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu Those of you who have iman, إِذَا قِيلَ لَكُمْ تَفَسَّحُوا فِي الْمَجَالِسِ When it is said to you, spread out in the meeting. So the meeting is about to be held. Don't sit right next to each other, all the way close to the Prophet ﷺ. You see, the Sahaba loved the Prophet ﷺ. So they want to sit where? Close. And they tighten up. They're right around the Prophet. Allah says, no, when there's a shura meeting going on, when there's a meeting going on, you spread out. So there's space in between you. So you're spread out like a checkerboard. 
So when the troublemaker, four troublemakers walk in, they can't sit together. They gotta sit like between Hamza and Umar. <laughs> little puny little munafiq in the middle of big guy Umar. And now he can't say. <laughs> he can't do that no more because Umar is going to grab his head like this. So he's, he's not, he can't make trouble anymore. Why? Because they're all spread out. إِذَا قِيلَ لَكُمْ تَفَسَّحُوا فِي الْمَجَالِسِ فَفَسَّحُوا Then spread out immediately. يَفْسَحِ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ May Allah spread you out. Meaning may Allah diversify you. May Allah increase you also. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكُمْ مُنْشُزُوا And when it's said to you, get out of here. Leave. Meeting's over. Meeting adjourned. مُنْشُزُوا Leave. فَنْشُزُوا Get out. Don't stop. Don't stop in the parking lot and discuss. Don't go to eat shawarma at, uh, at Afrah and then talk about the meeting. Don't do it. Just go home. Unshuzu. Leave. Leave is done. Meeting is done. No meeting after the meeting. No socializing after the meeting. It's an amana. Shaitan will come and make you discuss the contents of the meeting and it'll turn into najwa. Just leave. This is Quran's guidance for meetings. Quran's guidance for meetings. You know there are masjids in our country that have lawsuits that started with discussions in parking lots after meetings if we only follow Allah's advice we can save ourselves so much trouble Allah is so much trouble <laughs> and it's simple advice and we forget that Allah gives us advice that saves us from trouble Allah is not burdening us يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ Allah wants to lighten your burden not make life difficult for you إِذَا قِيلَ لَكُمْ أُنْشُزُوا فَانْشُزُوا then leave يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Allah will give those who truly have iman among you and those who have been given knowledge, Allah will raise their ranks. This will be a means by which your ranks are raised. The angels will be making dua for you because you fought the forces of shaitan and you avoided that, that unnecessary socializing that can lead to big trouble for your community. وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ And Allah is in full view of what you're up to. Allah has complete view of what's going on. SubhanAllah. So these, these aspects of guidance that I've been, and, and collective guidance that I've been talking about today, I felt for a long time kind of a burden in me to want to talk about this. And inshallah ta'ala scholars more qualified than I will add to this and will add a lot better to this. But at least I wanted something to be available even though our last session is left. I, I want to just share, really share with you my intention. My intention is this sort of this sort of thing gets like recorded, the MP3s are available. Every time somebody becomes a new Shura member in anything, they become a board member at a masjid. They, they become a new teacher, a volunteer at a school. They start helping out in an MSA. They just listen to these few hours and then they go. So they, this, at least some orientation is there, some Quranic orientation. I know we get the orientation that our meeting starts at this time and this is our protocol and this is how we have our meeting minutes and these are the bylaws and this. That's all the administrative orientation. But we also need a spiritual orientation, a Quranic orientation for our voluntary work, right? And that, that can save us a lot of trouble. And I even argue this sort of thing, it should be repeated every few months. We should just go back because we forget. Al-insan yansa. Yeah, human beings don't remember. So it's good to go back and say, Oh man, I think I've been doing Najwa. <laughs> I better stop. It's good that I reminded myself. I think I'm a little too obsessed with my own opinion. It's good I got that reminder. So this is a reminder for myself, and it's a reminder for all of you. Now as I close this session, I want to tell you the next session for me personally is the hardest session. Because I know for a fact, I don't live up to it. I don't live up to it. I'm put, I'm put in a position of leadership in my own organization. And I know for a fact I'm falling short in many of these things. So before I even talk about it, I'm just admitting openly to Allah and to all of you. That is not what I represent in my personal life. It's, I'm trying. At the, at the best I can say is I'm trying. But I'm not, nowhere near meeting the, the standards that Allah has set in the next session, which is a session on what are the qualities of a leader. May Allah make us true leaders. That, are, that represent the beautiful sunnah of our messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Take five minutes and inshallah ta'ala will start our final session. What time is Maghrib here? Okay, so we, we might need the full hour for this one inshallah.